Welcome, everybody. I'm Michael from Boredom Sated. And I'm John. And today we're going to embark on the fourth part of The Prison Pentat, a five-book series by Troy Denning from the 1990s. Number four takes place on Athos, the dark sun world near the city, no, near the town of Cled. Cled is uh, a dwarven, dwarven town. And it begins with... Um, well, we're introduced, actually, to Ricard. Ricard is a very um, important child, a mole child. It's half dwarf, half human. Mother is Neva, the previous uh, human gladiator who was the lover of Rikus, and who is now ma married to Calum, who's the sun cleric who did a phenomenal job of, of uh, showing that clerics are do a heck of a lot more than just heal in Dark Sun. <laughs> so... Ricard is going to be is a child of destiny in that regard. He is destined to kill or at least defeat uh, Rajat, according to some people anyway. And he becomes like almost a MacGuffin in terms of you know trying to find him and keep him and such. But the most important part of this is the relationship with Aegis Rasselis, who is our main protagonist in this book, and. John's favorite character, Tithian, the star scream of Dark Sun. <laughs> uh, now, in this regard, they are both looking for uh, the Dark Lenses. The Dark Lenses are, is a mighty artifact that is made of obsidian and was used by the first sorcerer, whose name is Rajat. You hear that name quite more often throughout this, uh, what's left of the series, to turn. Um, men, uh, human men and women, into champions. These champions were all assigned uh, a race to destroy, basically a genocidal war, known as the Cleansing Wars. However, one of the aspects of the side effects of this uh, device is it is um, it also boosts the user's abilities like a hundredfold. It can boost your magical powers or it can bo boost your psionic powers. And a lot of uh, what you do with it uh, physically manifest in the real world. Most of the time it's mostly mental. This one is like physical and mental. It's really impressive. And with it, you can change the world. You can literally do what, uh, almost what you want. So Agus and Tithian go off and seek it out. Um, but not together. <laughs> I should mention that. Tithian is being a, being a rat bastard, as again. He finds out due to his uh, two advisors, the lovable Sasha and Wayans, um, two uh, disembodied heads of ex-champions who are punished for being traitors and actually being loyal to Rajat. More on that later. And uh, he finds out that the Dark Lenses are, reside with uh, one of two giant tribes. And didn't know which one it is, but he looks for it. So Aegis is like, where the heck is Tithian? What's he doing? And why is he being a jabron? And he uh, goes after him as well. And he gets stopped by this giant named Philo, who was hired by Tithian to basically slow uh, Aegis down. However, Philo is not exactly the, the most um, intelligent of um, giants. Not that that's saying much, but uh, considering the giants you actually meet later on. But ultimately, um, Tithian, I'm sorry, Aegis brings him over to his side, and they head off together. Now, one of the things about this, and I'm going to put a little spoiler on this, um, book is that a lot of people die. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people introduced. A lot of people die. This is one of the highest uh, uh, death counts, body counts <laughs> of any uh, Dark Sun book. I know Crimson Legion had a lot of people die, but that's in war. This is just simply, you know, people backstabbing. This and, is main characters like of the book, and about seventy-five percent of them are, go go bye bye in this. Yeah, book. you introduce somebody, yeah. So. <laughs> So Tithian is on the way to Balak. It's Balak is another city state that is ruled by Andropodus. Um, imagine like um, almost like a Zeus-like figure. He's more a Greco-Roman type of individual, and his city state rests on what is known as the Sea of Silt. Now, of course, Dark Sun doesn't have at this time anyway um, doesn't have any bo uh, standing bodies of water, but what it does is have is a literal sea of silt. Imagine fine powder. Now imagine stepping on it and sinking down to it. It's like quicksand, except without the water. Just simply go, 
you go, you, you die from that one. However, there are ways to uh, buoyant uh, ship and trade over the Sea of Silt. The Giants, for instance, know certain paths only known to them because they are so big that they, they the pressure of their feet uh, compacts the silt so that they know where to go. And so they're like waist deep in it, but they can still walk these paths across the sea. They also raid Andropodus' holdings. That's one of the reasons why Andropodus is kind of pissed at Tithian for. The second way, by the way, is a ship that's held aloft by psychic power. They have an obsidian orb type of thing, not an orb, but a, a device where a scientist has to channel power and it floats the ship. That's, I hope this is made into a movie someday or a TV series just to see that. But Androp so Tithian goes to Andropodus and he's, he hints that he knows where the dark lenses are. But um, Andropodus is kind of like, is kind of pissed off because he had to pay um, the dragon his um, uh, tit, tithe. The normal tithe is 1,000 souls, 1,000 people for every city-state. But since the time of Kalak and um, uh, the fall of uh, Tyr to, the, you know, free, uh, forces of um, Rikus and Agus and uh, Sidera, now... Um, the tith fell to Andropodus, so he had to pay 2,000 uh, slaves to this. However, he's willing to help Tithian um, out of the evilness of his heart, <laughs> just to secure the Dark Lenses mostly for himself. Now, Tithian is under the impression that the, it, that the deal he made with Boris way back in the beginning, uh, the first book, the end of the first book, was that Boris could make him into a sorcerer king. That, however, is not true. Now, um, eventually, Aegis follows Tithian, and they wind up in this uh, area where two warring giant tribes are. One of them has beast's heads, and the other one has normal humanoid heads. Now, at this point, um, Tithian is like negotiating with them, and th at this point, also, Aegis and Tithian are captured by the, by the giants. And they are. It seems that one of the um, one of one of the tribes does have the art of the obsidian. Um, uh, no, sorry, the, the dark lenses. Uh, what they call the obsidian oracle, and it belongs to the beast heads right now. They're not supposed to have it. They were. They had a uh, a battle, a uh, kind of a war, but the winner was supposed to get the um, dark lenses, but uh, the beast heads cheated and they stole them. So they go about uh, trying to persuade the leader of the giants, hey, you know what? We can help you recover the, the Dark Lenses if you show us where they are. So they go into this area called Castle Farrell, and they are able to uh, retrieve the Dark Lenses. However, there's a battle ensues, uh, and Philo, good old Philo. Uh, Philo's one of, the, one of my favorite characters in this, however briefly he's here. That's a hint of what happens to him, unfortunately. Um, the beast has captured him, and this is how dumb the guy... Well, not dumb. I'd say naive. He's naive. Do you remember what the beast heads offered him? What, the beast heads? Um... Yeah, they offered him. Remember, they're beast heads. Right. They they said, but the he's head. got a normal head. What, do you remember what they offered him? I believe the bear head, right? Yeah. There's another... There's a, there's a bear... A psionic bear. An overgrown mutated psionic bear. It's just a scary thought by, the, by that combination. So imagine a giant grizzly bear. Not just a regular bear, a giant grizzly bear on top of being psychic. And the beast had say, you know what, if you want to be like us, because he's shunned by his own tribe. I should have mentioned that. Philo is kind of an outcast. You have to kill this bear and then cut your own head off and put the bear's head off. <laughs> you got to love Darcy. <laughs> That's not how you beast head giant has created. They're born, they're species. <laughs> People think that's how they are. They're like, um, uh, I don't know, like maybe a chimera or something like that, where they're magically created. But no, they, they actually have, you know, they're, that they're a species. So they're just they're just pulling the biggest prank on uh, poor old Philo, and he he unfortunately believes it. 
In any case, they manage to su- subdue the bear before Philo kills himself <laughs> by cutting his own, trying to cut his own head off. Um, it seems the Tithians managed to get a hold of the dark lenses. And he has a bag of holding. The good old D&D bag of holding. Uh, what, what party doesn't uh, uh, have like one for every single person after a while? But he's not able to escape with these dark lenses because the damn, first of all, the damn thing's massive. It's like the size of a table. So I don't know how he got it in the freaking uh, bag of holding. But he, can, he then gets sucked into the bag of holding, so he's now stuck there. So it comes to Aegis to eventually find him. And Sasha and Wyans does their little bit of manipulating, tell them that, you know, Tithian's inside there, but, you know, don't let him out, and all that wonderful stuff. And eventually, um, they managed to find their ship. Um, the, they were attacked by giants early on. I probably shouldn't have said that. And they were separated from their their psychic ship, the ship that uh, floats uh, on top of the sand without sinking. And they are then able to escape. Aegis pulls Tithian out of there. And they... It's called the Shadow Viper. That's the, that's, the, that's the ship. And they're heading out. And while uh, the other giants are coming in to try and capture them again, uh, Philo sacrifices himself and uh, gets killed. R.I.P. Philo. You are, you're a great character for one book, at least. <laughs> and during this time, while um, um, Aegis is trying to uh, keep the ship afloat, Tithian backstabs him. Tithian and uh, Aegis were childhood friends, and uh, they led, they went, their path, uh, their careers went on separate paths, obviously, but they were, uh, yeah, it's one of those things where Tithian chose power over friendship, obviously, and, you know, he's starscreened, he does. <laughs> so anyway, um, Aegis dies in this one, and uh, Tithian uh, runs off with the in possession with the, of the Dark Lenses, probably the most powerful artifact on all of Dark Sun in the world. Meanwhile, in Tyr, um, um, Ricard is taken from uh, Ricard, who is a, a Cleb with uh, his mother and father, uh, mother and father, uh, Neva and Caleb. Uh, they moved to move to uh, Tyr because it's a bit safer. I'm not saying that much, uh, considering. Uh, what kind of enemies they're lining up against them. And the two dwarves, uh, the two dwarves that hid the um, the dark lenses, their ghosts, or their, sorry, their banshees, they come and uh, give Ricard, um, they're known as uh, Jorash and Saram, they give the, the belt um, and the crown of Camelot to... Um, to Ricard, because they believe he is the one that's going to kill the dragon. He's prophesied now to kill the dragon. Now, as a side note, uh, dwarves um, in Dark Sun uh, are different from other dwarves in that they have a focus, which basically means they dedicate themselves to one cause. And as soon as they try and do something else that's not related to their cause, they suffer penalties. But when they are constantly on their cause, they get bonuses, as it were, uh, in D&D's game statistical terms. But, when they don't complete their focus, then they return to unlife. Uh, when they die, they return as banshees, woven banshees. That's what Sasha, uh, that's what, uh, sorry, uh, Joresh and Saram did. They were, they had to break their oath uh, in order to kill um, uh, Boris. The uh, who was who basically became the dragon later on, uh, in order to guard the dark lenses, but now they have a chance to rectify uh, their mistake because they right here they have what they believe is the reincarnation of the last king Ricard, king Ricard, um, and it's like now they can finally finish their focus and die. So what did you think of the book? Well, we should go over what Tithian believes. So he wants to become a dragon king using the dark lens, and yeah. Boris you know, lied to him, and he finds that out, um, and that only Rajat 
can make him a sorcerer king True. with the dark lens. So True. now, of course, Sasha and Wyan are, are aligned with Rajat to yeah. free him. Yeah. And now Titian is now getting his hands on the dark lens to so he can uh, become that, that sorcerer king that he always wanted to be. <laughs> so, of course, he's going to become a champion. He wants to become a champion, not just a sorcerer king. Wow. Yeah. Well, champion, you know. I mean, <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. It says you're a champion, you're a champion, right? <laughs> And the, uh, there's, there's only semantics at this point. There's really no difference when, in terms of power. So he's going to star scream Boris. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. He's, yes, he's a survivor. He's, he's a survivor. He's very going to be so a, the final book. Um, and you have Agus, of course, being the only main character to die. Yeah, he's so, the only hero to die. But that, it wouldn't be Dark Sun if everybody survived. <laughs> um. And uh, yeah, you're you're gonna see all the conclusion come in, in in the fifth final book, where you know a lot of deaths take place in that book. Uh, yeah. If you thought if you thought there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of deaths and, and major changes in the world, it's the fifth book that that people were really uh, you know annoyed of because of how it changed the entire campaign world, um, you know against what many dungeon masters were were doing, and th- therefore you know it's like Within three, four years of the campaign, the original campaign come out, they have to do a revised set. Two where, years. <laughs> well, yeah. But everybody, where, where a lot of things have just vastly changed. Um, and that, that's called the meta plot. And that's, you know, that, that'll come in the next uh, next uh, book, Synopsis. And uh, that that's it, it's a huge issue with many RPG games, not just Dark Sun. When they do a meta plot, it just annoys the players and and the dungeon and game masters. You gotta stretch that when you're creating a, a game system based upon a, with a back plot with a background. You really have to pace that over a long period of time. If you're gonna say I'm gonna this game system will last us ten years, whatever it is, just for the sake of saying that, you gotta make sure that whatever you set up in the beginning, the first couple of things, that remains pretty unchanged. For several years, they didn't do that with Dark Sun. That's what created the problem that eventually, uh, I believe, doomed the line. In that you sh- you're moving too fast. It's like you literally set up the table and then you suddenly change the menu. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's very difficult. I mean, you change yeah. the ingredients. Like, oh hey. And the prison pentad, you know, people feel they like gave too much hope in Dark Sun. Yeah, too quickly. Far, too quick- far- you set up the you set up the table yeah like I said you set up the table and then you do something ridiculous but anyway all in all it was uh, I I how did you feel about the book thumbs up thumbs down or down? Uh, this one's a thumbs up I mean I like psionics uh, yeah and whenever I can actually play a psionic in in D and D I try to but you know it's very you? Different. no no you don't I believe you don't believe you you're always the guy in the melee. <laughs> Malay. I'm old wizard, right? Oh, I don't believe you at all. You're but right. I love playing psionics. I play a lot of psionics in 2D, but of course 5 e doesn't have psionics as of yet. Anyway. It does. But, uh, that's, uh, well, that was, uh, it's fake psionics. I mean, come on. I mean, the stuff that they introduced in the latest books, that's fake psionics. It's not real. Psionics. It's fake psionics. That's psionics. It's just very limited psionics. They want too a, much powers, I think. Not a, not a full class. Yeah. Um, ridiculous. <laughs> I think I think I definitely give this a thumbs up as well. Uh, I personally don't like that uh, Agus died, but you know what? That's that adds to the stakes. It, it really does add add to the um, uh, the the drama and building up of momentum for the final book. Um, the you know it gives a impression that no one's safe. That if a main character can die, then anybody can die. Never go. And shows you how how depraved Tithian is that he would kill his best friend. How yes, how how yeah, the only guy who can call him friend, he he backstabs yeah. So yeah, although it does make Tithian a great villain, <laughs> a running villain. He's the running villain. He's not the main villain, but he's the secondary villain <laughs> who's on his own little quest. I do like that. I mean, uh, I always like Trash as well. <laughs> Uh, he's one of those guys where the bad, there's a good guy, bad guy, and then the secondary Starscream villain who's there doing his own thing, messing up the plot, but <laughs> making it better 
overall? Well, that's what I, that's what we believe is the, um, our, that's our opinion about this fourth book. There's going one more book in the series to go, The Cerulean Storm, and that'll be our next video for Dark Sun. And uh, as before, always uh, hit the like button, subscribe, share our video, and uh, hit the notification button for our next video, and we'll see you next time. I'm Michael. And I'm John. See you later. See you later.